So he thought he should have married. I don't think he ever could have, because that would have been the ultimate commitment. Nobody does it better. Linda creates one of his best title sequences in 1977 for The Spy Who Loved Me. For the first time, he incorporates the actor playing 007 into the titles. It is one of his, his best sequences, because it, it, thematically it works within the whole picture. We shoot at 120 frames, hair blowing, and scarves wafting, and girls doing acrobatics. On a uh, Bond film, uh, they can put you in the mood for what follows. The design is predicated on what the picture is, the story of the picture. And uh, also, the music has a lot to do with it. Morris didn't only do the title sequences, he did the coming attractions for the Bond movies. <laughs> My name is Bond, James Bond. My latest, and if I'm not careful, my last assignment will take me to new heights of adventure. Binder's titles on For Your Eyes Only feature another first, the singer of the title song appearing on screen. She had a beautiful face, and he just wanted to shoot her and, and make these intricate main titles with Sheena. When he saw Sheena Easton, I think he fell in love. He was really creative. He knew what he wanted. You see these hands coming up, you know, which is me, like I'm swimming up through the water. Everyone thought I shot this totally naked at 21. What I was actually wearing was the lining to a black satin ball gown. Maurice said, you have to come in on your lips. You're going to have 70 millimeter lips. I'm thinking, what does that mean? I thought that I was sitting perfectly still for Maurice. Not moving my head, he kept saying, God, God, she's moving, she's moving. He'd come over, darling, I know you're doing your best. I'm going, I have to breathe. So he said, no, no, we have to bring in the clamp. So he brings in this thing that clamps the back of my neck. So there's a wrought iron thing going up the back of my neck, this thing holding my head like this, so that I couldn't have moved it this far. And I'm supposed to be perfectly relaxed and sexy and naked and underwater. There was nothing glamorous or sexy about it, nothing relaxed and nothing comfortable. But I'll tell you this, I didn't move. And he got 70 millimeter lips. Morris was a unique, hugely talented, amazingly infuriating character. An amazing, talented man. Um, Great sense of humor. Is that button going to give you a glare and a sparkle in the lens or anything like that? Do you have to brush it down or something? No. Get out of it. Put anti flare on your head. <laughs> it was so easy to laugh and joke with him that you had to be aware when he was being serious. He was an artist. He didn't really let anyone else know what he was doing. And it was very, very difficult at times. He, he could see what he wanted. He wasn't too good at telling you exactly what he wanted. Morris used to shoot miles and miles of material. He was a genius with, it, with his overlays. And... I mean, I can remember working with him in the cutting rooms where he'd have sort of four pieces of film running through a moviola, which you could only just see on a tiny screen. But his idea of imagery and what he could do was very clever. His genius was understanding what he wanted and making damn well sure, however much pain it caused to anybody else, he was going to get exactly what he wanted. Sometimes he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Sometimes he'd have a vague idea of what he wanted to do. Sometimes he wouldn't have a clue and he would just sort of play around until something came up and then he'd build on it. He was very whimsical, I think. We very often would, would produce the most exciting stuff in a tiny little room with a couple of lights and a few little bits of paint and day glow, and that was the fun. He knew he had to design the credit sequence on the bonds. And until the last second, it did not function. He wasn't a procrastinator. He just liked working to a heavy deadline. Getting hell from Cubby and Harry because the titles were never ready. Wildly inefficient, drive you mad, you'd never be ready on time and all those sort of things. It was very frustrating for the production team sometimes when we're getting close to release date 
and we still hadn't seen any titles. But when he was under enormous pressure and Covey said to him, you've got to have your things by the end of next week, he worked day and night and came up with wonderful ideas. Everybody knew he'd come through in the end. He took a long time putting those titles together, and it showed, because they were done with such meticulous care. Well, the titles in a Bond film are a very lengthy process. To do those two and a half, three minute titles are, is a long deal. We used to be putting the titles in just the night before we were showing the, the premiere of the film. The standard joke was that we would have the royal premiere, and I would read. Uh, the cast list out because the titles wouldn't be finished. It was always uh, the last minute when he actually finished. And I think his logic in that was to make sure that nobody ever changed them. In 1989's License to Kill, Morris Binder creates his last James Bond title sequence. But he does not direct the innovative music video. I just went ahead and created what I thought was a, a sort of homage to Morris Binder's work. Maurice had a cough, and I couldn't prevail upon him to stop in New York and see my doctor. He was frightened of dying and frightened of going to the doctor. But he kept coughing to such a degree, he, kept, he shook his head and he said, I knew those guys in the editing room would kill me. They never stopped smoking. I remember he had on a black turtleneck. Why do you remember things like that? And he held his coat away. And he said, I've lost a lot of weight, haven't I? And I said, yes. And I said, you're ill, aren't you? And he said, yes, I am. He was this very secretive person. And he died secretively, which was very tragic, by himself. He died very quickly. He died within like six months after the diagnosis, which he never told me about. Sweet, lovely man, Morris. I am still, I'm just deeply, I miss him. The people at the funeral all knew each other, but had never really met through Maurice. You know, I'll paraphrase Albert Einstein, what he said about himself. He said, nobody understands what I do, but everybody likes me. So I'm not sure whether everybody really understood what Maurice did, and yet everybody loved him. One of his biggest collections were these art catalogues, hundreds and hundreds of art catalogues. And I, I understand where he got a lot of his inspiration. He was a huge art collector and none of us really understood um, what an incredible art collector he was. He owned Picasso's, he owned Matisse. He had one of the finest private art collections of modern art in, in London. He collected for the beauty, the aesthetic beauty. If you look back, Maurice was a, into modern art long before the rest of the world was. All his art, wonderful art, wonderful collection of modern art, was stacked against the wall, facing the wall. He never have it on the walls for show. He was a great art connoisseur, but he was also, you know, a great title maker. In the 1990s, Danny Kleinman creates a new generation of title design using cutting-edge computer graphics. When uh, Morris died, sadly, later. Um, they approached me to actually do the titles. 